Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee with Kovu the cat. He likes when I do these weather discussions, so he hangs around. Anyway, let's see how long he stays. Okay, we're going to do the EPO today and the NAO and the GFS. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, focus on the EPO today, the East Pacific Oscillation and why it's important. Okay. When uh, we look at the long range, and I've been touting this idea of um, a pattern change developing during uh, the month of November, targeting around the middle of November, and just a couple of things as we go look at the short range and then how it evolves on the latest GFS run. The EPO index, the East Pacific Oscillation, is basically the same idea as the North Atlantic Oscillation. Uh, the EPO, we're looking at pressure changes in the Pacific. When the EPO is positive, this um, creates a flow of air from the Pacific across uh, the United States and into Western Canada, and basically it cuts off the uh, cold air supply from the, uh, from the Arctic regions. And we're going to see the EPO <clears throat> positive uh, through the first eight or nine days of November, and then it trends toward neutral as we go uh, after uh, November 10th, through the 13th. That's as far as out, out as we can go. Now, normally, this would mean very warm conditions here in the east, but what we also have at the same time is strong blocking in the Atlantic is shown by the negative NAO index. So when the, neg the NAO index is negative, pressures are higher in the North Atlantic, which displaces cold air into the eastern part of the United States. So these two opposing ind indices at the moment <clears throat> are kind of battling with each other. So I think, you know, I've been saying this idea that over the next week to 10 days that will be cool on a couple of days, then warm up for a couple of days, then cool down for a couple of days. And the the cool downs and warm ups won't be extreme on either side. They'll be a few degrees, will be above normal uh, for a, a stretch and then below normal for a stretch. And when you average it out, we'll probably be uh, maybe near or a little bit above normal over the 10 day period. But. Uh, the fact that it's going toward neutral toward the end of the period is uh, an encouraging sign in the, um, in, in, the, in the context of the forecast that I made. And before we look at the GFS, the other thing I'm going to look at also is the uh, Siberian snow cover growth, which we, we've been following, and it was updated today. And just as an update, the rate of growth uh, continues to be at a very rapid pace and it looks like it's going to finish. We only have a, a two days left, so this is through the 29th. So it's going to finish in, in the top uh, four uh, winters. Uh, you're going to have of uh, top four Octobers. 2014-15 is number one. Uh, very close for a second and third are 15-16 uh, and 13-14. 15-16 we we throw out because that was an El Nino year. So it, it's on par with uh, two of the coldest winters that we've seen in the last 12 years, 13, 14, and 14, 15. And I, for what it's worth, I don't know, I haven't seen any research that ties North America snow cover growth uh, with the winters uh, in the United States or specifically in the eastern states, but uh, the, the October of 2016-17, is uh, we're seeing the highest snow cover growth rate in the last 12 years. So just that, we'll throw that as an aside. Now, We'll look at the GFS model, and I'll show you uh, what it means with respect to a positive EPO. Now, if you look at the, the uh, pattern here across uh, North America as we go through this week, and the EPO becomes strongly positive. So what you have is the flow of air that comes in off the Pacific and floods Canada and the Plain States with very warm air. The only thing is that in the east we have this trough and we have blocking here in the Atlantic which is forcing some troughing along the east coast. So this is this is what is preventing us from getting into the uh, super warm air which is going to be back through this area of the country. So um, that is the uh, one mitigating factor here in what normally would be a very warm week where you would have uh, warm air flooding the entire United States and all of southern Canada. but because of the blocking here in the Atlantic, uh, that's going to prevent that. Now, watch what happens as we go through time and what happens in the Pacific. So this is a week from today. Uh, you st still have uh, air that's coming in from the Pacific, but what begins to happen is that 
that flow starts to break down as we move through time. And gradually, as we go through the period of November 10th and beyond, if, if we take, you know, if we look at this uh, from uh, from this standpoint, let me just, whoops, well, that's kind of nice that it did that. I didn't want it to, but let's <laughs> let's uh, take a look here. All right, so there we go. We'll fix that up. All right, so now you know the Pacific Air is not moving up uh, into the United States but it's moving up into northwest Canada and you can see that we're creating a flow now that's coming out of Canada and we still have the blocking signature here uh, in the Atlantic so that is now creating a bit of a vortex that's forming in eastern Canada as a source of colder air and that's going to be coming in to the eastern United States if this is literally how it looks um, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to look uh, as we move through time, but when we go through uh, the latter stages of the two-week period, there is a definitely colder flow, and now the Pacific at this point is completely cut off in terms of flooding air uh, into uh, Canada. It's all being deflected. Now you have this big upper high that's right here, and so the air is going like this uh, up into Alaska. So you're getting cold air that's just being displaced southward into uh, the eastern part of the United States and you have this flow out in the Atlantic like this so this is a cold, definitely a colder flow uh, it's not what you would see if it was an ideal um, cold air flow which would be to come straight out of Canada into the Northeast that's not exactly what's happening but it seems to be in some sort of transitional process here as we go through and start moving in to the um, second half, the, 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 the middle part of the month. This is uh, for uh, November 15th. So look, the bottom line is through all of this is that you know, I've been, I'm forecasting based on what I'm looking at um, an uneven start to the month of November and then a gradual transition to a colder weather pattern for the second half of the month and the first part of December. Um, it would seem to me that that's going to probably bring some early wintertime weather to parts of the Northeast. Um, of first, of course, probably the areas away from the coast, and maybe at some point that'll start to work its way southward, depending on how cold it is. Um, but we'll have to just wait and see how this all plays out. But certainly, it looks like we're going to have some very interesting times ahead of us. So uh, don't forget to check out the latest weather. Uh, on uh, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, and of course, when it comes to storm chasing, it's ssstormchasers.com.